Hi everyone, my name is Geyser and I'm really, really excited to bring you the very first episode of my tutorial series on game development for an Amiga. I've long since wanted to do this and you know, ever since I kind of finished Bomb Jack Beer Edition, I really had my heart set on doing some tutorial videos, uh, PowerPoint presentations, that type of thing, on how to actually build an Amiga game like they were done back in the day using Assembler and uh, and you know and, and Amiga hard drives and things like that. So I thought I'd probably get to uh, get actually to it after, now that I've finished Rygar, borrowing a few bugs. Um, so I've put together this presentation for episode number one, which is building a tool chain and configuring it. And we're going to see how we get on. So if you, it's really off the cuff, first time I've done this sort of thing. So if you like it, fair enough. Uh, let me know if you don't like it fair enough let me know and hopefully you'll be able to follow, follow along and um, and actually for yourselves get to build a tool chain so that you can start developing some Amiga related stuff hopefully games because uh, the idea of this entire tutorial series is to focus on making Amiga games uh, in assembler as I have done with with Bomb Jack Beer Edition and Rygar You've come to find it's not super difficult. It just needs a bit of um, it needs a bit of dedication and a bit of will to kind of overcome problems. Um, and and yeah, so let's 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 see how we fare. The idea is I'm going to run through part of the presentation and then basically explain what I'm going to do and then I'll actually do it in a live virtual machine and so that you can follow on. Okay, so here we go. So tool chain setup and configuration. So here's the step summary for this one. We're going to install WinUAE, install Notepad++, Vasm, which is the Amiga assembler uh, written by Frank Will and his team. Uh, we're going to be installing the Kickstart ROMs and the Workbench, uh, but I need to talk about some licensing uh, issues around that and how to actually legitimately license those those um, those products we're going to be creating some Amiga development virtual machines we're going to install workbench we're going to install a tool called monarm which is a monitor which helps with debugging we're going to configure some what I call glue scripts and we're going to configure um, notepad plus plus for some hotkey so we can quickly build our build our system build our our um, programs within a couple of seconds and test them as well so that's that's the order of it so why use a tool chain well tool chain is you can really take advantage of today's modern modern tools and operating systems you know back in the day developers would typically develop on an Amiga uh, for me I wasn't lucky enough to be able to afford a hard drive back in the day so I had to develop games off well I didn't develop any games it was, they were mainly just small projects and little demos but basically I had a floppy drive and I used to have to keep all my source code on the floppy disks <clears throat> and it was a bit of a nightmare um, however with today's tools using WinUAE and Windows you know it, that becomes a lot easier you know you can keep your source code on your machine on your Windows machine and rapidly run and assemble your code where huge projects like you know like um you know like an entire game if i was to build an entire game such as rygar um and just to do a test would maybe take a few minutes to run a test on a on a real amiga on a windows pc with a decent spec takes seconds totally seconds <clears throat> with win uae we get some really good advanced debugging techniques as well and capabilities that we can that we can utilize that we just didn't have previously on 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 an Amiga, um, you know, we we really had to get to the nitty gritty of of trying to figure out what where the problems were in source code and things like that by by other methods of debugging. WinUA has changed all of that, and you know, and modern the modern environment means that we can see exactly what's going on in the Amiga. Really, really useful. Big thing as well as the source code control. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier about floppy disks don't have to use floppy disks anymore basically you you write your code and save them to a hard drive save it to a hard drive on your computer 
I use the option of um, of copying that source code whenever I make any significant changes up to one of my cloud servers, but you can equally use a source code repository system like GitHub or something like that, uh, depending on which way you feel and what you're used to. But one of the biggest things is, is how easy they are to use. So, you know, you can literally just start coding um, on, on, you, on your Windows 10 machine, get, get Notepad++ or your favorite text editor, fire it up <clears throat> and, just get, and just start coding. And a few hotkeys set up, and you can build your build your build your program, and you can test your program, and you can debug your program, all within a few all within a few key presses. You're going to need some things, as I mentioned, Windows 10 64-bit operating system. Now, it's just because I have a 64-bit operating system set up as a virtual machine, which is why I'm kind of saying that it will work on Windows 7. It will work on a 32-bit operating system. What I'm not going to cover is doing this on a Mac. There's some probably probably some better tools to actually do this on a Mac, um, and in particular the the FSUAE um, emulator. I'm not saying that that's better, but there's some better integration tools which I have seen that work better with the Mac with FSUAE. You're going to need about a gigabyte of drive space, and really important, you're going to need an internet connection as well. So the anatomy of a tool chain. So what we're going to do is just look to see overall as an overall summary of what we're actually trying to achieve here. And in the blue here, what we've got is uh, our Windows 10 platform, our machine. OK, and installed on that machine, we have, as I've mentioned, Notepad++, which is a text editor. And we have WinUAE, which is an Amiga emulator. Now, as well as that, we've got Vasm, which is a, a, an assembler, which takes the uh, machine language or the, I guess, the, um, the machine instructions that you type in into Notepad++ and it converts them to an, to an Amiga readable, executable file. And the way it does that is, is that in WinUAE, we create a couple of Amigas, in this case, the examples I'm given here are as an, an E1200 Amiga. We create one for testing and we create one for debugging. And on our Windows 10 machine, we create some folders or directories, as some people call them, if you come from a Linux, Unix world. Um, C colon dev E1200 debug DHO, which is the Amiga hard drive zero or the system drive. And we have a separate drive as well, which is DH1. And what we do, we essentially, for each of these Amigas that we have set up emulated, we attach these hard drives to the folders that we have on our Windows 10 machine. And the beauty of that is, is that when we run a build, so this is an example of just running a build, we use Vasm to, to assemble that Amiga executable, and then we copy that executable into these hard drives of the Amiga. And so what then happens is, is that you can then run the run the emulated Amiga, give it be at the test machine using Shift F11, which will set up, or Shift F12 using the debug. And what will happen is that test.exe, which is being built, will actually get executed. On the test machine, it will just get executed and ran, so that might be a game. Or if you're going to do a debug session with Monam, it will start up Monam, and then the executable that has been built. So pretty straightforward. So the first steps are, uh, which I'm, I'm kind of not going to go all the way through this. I'm going to actually do it live. Um, well, say live, this is actually recorded, but you know I could go through and and go through each individual step. But I'm just going to run through it because I, I know quite well. So we're going to switch over to the virtual machine, and I'm just going to run the start doing this. So we're going to run through the installation procedure, and hopefully you can follow along. So this. This one I have here is a, a pristine virtual machine, which I've got set up. Windows 10 X64, it's 1903, I believe. Let me have a quick look. Inver. And let's see what it is. We get 1903, so this, this is the latest version of Windows 10 that we have. And I've copied a few files. Now, one important thing that I'm going to come on to is about the Kickstart ROM and the Workbench uh, the workbench ADFs or discs, those is, those are licensed products that are copyrighted and 
there's two ways you can actually get get those. The first is the own an Amiga, and I think from a from Cloanto who actually owns the owns the copyright to the Kickstart ROM and Workbench, they allow you to do a backup of that and use it for emulation purposes, which we which is what we're doing here essentially. The other option is if you don't have an Amiga, you can buy uh, you can actually buy a product called Amiga Forever, which costs about twenty pound, and then you can have the license to actually use an Amiga as an emulated Amiga. So that's the two options. I might touch up, touch a little bit on that a bit later on, but we're going to get right into it and start the installation. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to WinUAE. So I've got some links set up. And the first thing we're going to do is install WinUAE. And we want the 64-bit version. And the window's set in the back here, so we're going to just click Next. <coughs> I'm happy with where WinUAE has been installed, program files WinUAE, so you might want to change that. So that's WinUAE done, and we should get an icon here, which we have, absolutely fine. And next thing what we're going to do is install Notepad++, which is quite easy to find. If we just type in Google Notepad++, plus plus and we look for the downloads latest version 7.8 and again we want the 64-bit version of it so we're gonna get the installer and we're gonna run that Okay with English. Um, we're going to do a next. Yes, I agree. I'm happy with where Notepad++ is going. Happy with that. And I'm just going to create a shortcut on the desktop and install. Fantastic. Um, we don't need to run Notepad++ at the minute because uh, we're going to be working on a couple of other things for the time being. So we can shut the browser window down. Don't need them for the for the time being. And um, we'll keep this Explorer window open. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start WinUAE. And the first thing it's going to complain about is some missing ROMs. So we're not going to worry about that just for the just for the minute. However, what we are going to do is we're going to just create a quick start of two A1200 machines, our test and our debug machine, which we're going to get set up right now. So quick start, select it on the left hand side. I'm going to select 1200 and it's complaining about the ROMs again and we're going to click on the ROM and I actually have a really a 1200 and I'm just going to find where I have my ROM set up or my ROM saved in files and that is the that is the ROM there that is required for an A1200 and what I'm going to do in RAM I'm going to just give myself a little bit more RAM given this this is a going to be a test and a debug machine and some fast RAM as well or slow RAM I should say and what also I'm going to do is while I'm here I'm just going to set up some hard drives so as I mentioned about that DHO and that DH1 we're going to create some folders on the Windows machine so I'm going to do that right now so on the C drive of the machine I'm just going to create a folder here and I'm going to call it development and I'm going to call this machines. And the first one is I'm going to say A1200 test. And I want a A1200 debug machine. And in the test one, I'm going to create a DHO for the first hard drive on the Omega. And a DH1 for the second hard drive on the Omega. DHO will actually contain the workbench that we're about to install. 
so we're just going to add those in so we're going to do add directory and first one is DHO we're just going to give the volume label a system and we're going to select the directory and find the folders that we just created so development machines a1200 DHO that's absolutely fine and we're going to add another one which is DH1 so DH1 and we're going to just call this dev and we're going to just point that in DH1 select okay that is absolutely fine so once we have that set up we just need to save this configuration so if you click on configurations I'm going to save this as A1200 test I'll just give it a description A1200 test and click the save button there fantastic so if we now start this Amiga we should see something happen great so we've got an Amiga up and running um, but it's a blank Amiga nothing's actually happening so the first thing to do is we're going to install Workbench onto the, onto the hard drive. So if you press F12, you'll get back into the config. And if you go into floppy drives, you'll need your Workbench disks for this, so the Workbench ADFs. And I have them stored on this machine in Workbench 3.1. And we want the install. And I'm just going to reset the machine so that it loads up with the install disk of Workbench. And there we go so what we need to do is we've got our DHO which is system which is empty we've got dev which is empty which is, and we've got the floppy disk that we have mounted and we're just going to start the install um, and we're in English This does take a little bit of time. I'm, I'm a novice user. I don't really know Workbench that well, so I'm just going to click Proceed. Proceed. Uh, the key maps, I'm going to select British just in case. <coughs> and now it wants the Amiga Workbench disk, so I'm just going to press F12 again, and I need to select the Amiga Workbench disk, which is this one here. Uh, click OK. And we want the Amiga local disk. So let's mount that. And now it wants the extras disk. So we're going to add that one to the drive. This typically will be no different to installing this on a real Amiga if you were setting up the hard drive, I guess. You just install on Workbench. And we want Omega Fonts now, so we're just going to install Omega Fonts. storage and 
and I want to install disk again because I think it's around about finished. Okay, wonderful. So that's now completed it's asking me to unmount the ADF disk so which I'm going to do I'm just going to eject that and I'm just going to proceed which just should reboot the Amiga and we should get a workbench and we do so we've just got a, a system with all the workbench files on and on DH0 and in dev we have an empty DH1 which is great it's exactly what we want and so now we're just going to need to modify a couple of files and uh, create that create that second Amiga debug machine as well. So first things first, we're going to shut that down and go into debug. Uh, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to copy those two DH uh, those two hard drives from the test Amiga Amiga folder into the debug Amiga folder so I'm just going to copy those two and go into debug and I'm going to do a paste. I'm going to go back into test and what we essentially want to do now is when the A 1200 test machine is started in the startup sequence of workbench we want to execute a program which would typically be simply dh1 colon test.exe which would be the project that we actually build. So it's quite straightforward to do that. If we go into DHO on the test hard drive and go into S and the file we're looking for is startup sequence and we can right click and edit this with notepad, notepad I should say. And at the bottom here, uh, before we get the C call on load WB, which is load work, workbench, we can just do simply DH1 colon test.exe fantastic and we're just going to save that and the other file that we want to change on the startup sequence in the A1200 debug is in the same file the, the startup startup sequence I should say and what we're going to do with this one, because when we run a debug session, what we want to do essentially is load up MonAm, which is part of um, which is part of DevPack. So we're going to say DH1 colon MonAm, which we haven't copied to the hard drive yet, which we're going to do in a second. And we're going to say MonAm, and the file that we want to debug is going to be DH colon test.exe. And that is it. So DH1 call on Monam. So we're going to load Monam and we're going to debug test.exe on DH1. So let's just copy those files over now. So those files I have for the Monam files, I have them here in my little repository that I have. And we're going to copy the Pro Pack over as well. Now these files I will put on. My, on the links on the server that I have so you can download them uh, whoops that is the wrong place we want to put this on the you want to copy these into the DH1 folder on the A1200 debug machine so we're going to copy those in there and if we just go in we can see Monam is there wonderful okay so now what we're going to do is we're just going to test that out and if we start up WinUAE again and go into our configurations we're going to make a we're going to load this A1200 test configuration and we're going to create the debug configuration and so we're going to load that and we're just going to quickly change this to debug And we're going to save that, okay, just for just to be sure. And we're going to modify these hard drive uh, folders where they point to. So as you can see, this is A1200 test. 
this needs to point to a 1200 debug so we're just going to modify those um, straightforward I don't have to find these I'm just changing them to debug and for this one change this to debug as well and if I click OK there and I'm just going to do a resave I'm going to resave this this configuration and that's fine we should now be able to actually once we start this because we don't have anything mounted in DF0 in the floppy drive we should see a monarm session with a bit of luck and there we go wonderful so we've got the monarm session running there which is absolutely fine work the the Amiga DOS error there 205 means that I can't find test.exe because we at the moment we haven't created it yet so that is absolutely fine so what we're going to do now is just create a couple of batch files to actually start these machines up automatically and it's quite again quite straightforward to do we're just going to use a notepad plus plus and some pointers so in development machines I'm actually going to create a folder called toolchain here as that will become useful a bit later on and in this toolchain folder I'm going to say new new text document and I'm going to say a1200 test.bat and I'm going to modify this with notepad plus plus so the first thing that we want to do is is actually when we double click this batch file we want to start up the the Amiga machine uh, straight away without any kind of any problems or any I haven't to wait for anything so the thing to do is to find out where WinUA is first so if we can find that by right clicking here and that is the path that is the full path to WinUA now we need to kind of make a couple of small changes with this Due to which way Windows actually works, and we just need to sh use the shortened versions because uh, of the paths, because um, it doesn't like spaces, so we have to program tilde one. And if we put it at, at the front here, we want to start in the background, WinUAE, and the file that we want to the file that we want to load is the config minus f is going to be the configuration that we have just saved the a1200 config now those on my machine are located in users public public documents the configurations yeah the con the loaded here so i'm just going to select that and in quotes i'm going to put that slash a1200 test UAE, which looks fine and I'm just going to save that so now what we should have is if I go back to the batch file that I've created and unfortunately this is a text document so I'm going to need to just get the text I'm going to need to rename this file to and get rid of the .txt that is with and if I just double click this as you can see we've started WinUAE and the config that's loaded is A1200 test now the problem with this is is that it's brought up the GUI and um, so there's a little option you can select or deselect under miscellaneous and it says show GUI on startup we need to deselect that just untick that box and click back on configuration and click save and we're going to just give that another try so we just double click that and sure enough it's fired up when you were E and bang we straight into the workbench great so we just need to do the same thing with the debug one and so quite straightforward we're just going to copy that file and paste it and we'll just rename this and if we edit with notepad plus plus we just need to make a modification from the test to tell it to load the debug 
configuration. And we're just going to save that. And so now when I click on debug, the 1200 debug, we have the similar sort of problem. We just need to untick that show GUI on startup and be sure to save it again to the debug and click save. And we shall try that once more. And we should get a Monarm session up and running. And we do. Fantastic. Marvellous. Okay, so that's that's the machine's kind of setup part done. We just now need to configure the hotkeys within within Notepad++ and, and glue everything together. So the thing to do is fire up Notepad++. Now what we want to do is, is install a utility or a plugin called NPP Exec. So the way to do that is if you go up to Plugins and then Plugins Admin. And it gives you the list of plugins that can be used or installed. If we go down to NPP Exec, tick that, and then click on Install. Yes, it wants to install it, which is great. And we're going to say yes to that. So now we should have an uh, extra drop down, which we do NPP Exec. And what we essentially now need to do is execute the commands and save them as small files in MPP exec. And it's quite straightforward to do that, which I'm going to take you through, but you have to run the commands first. So we're just going to do MPP exec and execute. And this will be a little bit long winded as I have it written down. But essentially, it is going to be. <clears throat> And we want to be calling Vasm, so we want to be calling the Vasm assembler. So C colon slash development slash toolchain slash Vasm.exe. Uh, we're still going to need to copy Vasm actually into there because I haven't saved it into that folder yet. And we want to build for a 68 or 20 processor because we're running on the near 1200. We need to see a kick one hoax. Which is to do with um, the Omega executable and exe minus f honk exe. The output file, okay, so minus o for the output file, and we're going to save that in the sequence slash development slash toolchain slash test dot exe. And now we want the source file. Now we haven't created a source file yet, but we can kind of preempt that. So we're going to say C colon slash development slash Amiga dev, or let's say Amiga game dev slash main dot ESM. So it's going to run Vasm, this, this utility, to assemble whatever machine language we've put in the or assembler we've put in this, this main.asm which we haven't created yet. Now once it's done that, we need to copy whatever's created in this test.exe, which is the Amiga executable, we need to copy it to those hard drives in DH1, in the test machine and the debug machine. So we just need to do a cmd slash c, which is a DOS command, a, a PC DOS command, and we're going to copy C colon slash development slash uh, let me have a look to chain test.exe and we're going to copy it to C colon slash development slash machines slash A1200 test slash DH1 slash test.exe. So that's going to copy that to the A1200 test. machine in the hard drive and um, we're just going to make a copy as well to the to the debug machine now what we want to do is is we want to save this as a build script so we're just going to click on save and we're just going to call this build project or just let's just call it build for now and we're going to need another script as well so we want another script which we're going to assign to another key and that's going to test what we've actually 
it's going to test the executable that has been compiled or assembled. So we're just going to run much more straightforward this c colon slash development slash tool chain slash a1200 test dot fat which we know we've already tested out and it works absolutely fine so we're just going to save that as well and we're going to call this test and we're just going to do a similar one for debug and we're going to save that as well and that is fine okay so it's going to complain a little bit um, until we get those hotkeys set up so now that we've set up those scripts what we should probably do is copy vasm into the into the uh, tool chains folder that we that we set up so into c colon slash and we want to go to um, development tool chain we need to have vasm the vasm executable here so i believe i have that on my I believe I have that on my machine as well, just for the files. Oh, it's going to make a liar of me. I have a link to it, which I'm not sure whether it works. But we're just going to copy the the Vasm executable from which is here. I'm um, just going to save it to that location which I mentioned development tool chain and save it into there that's great okay we're happy with that so we should have vasm in vasm actually there which is great yep we certainly do okay so now what we just need to do is link up those hotkeys so the way to do that we have to add these these the, the build the test and the debug to the to the the drop down menus in notepad plus plus so the way to do that is mpp exec and we're going to go to advanced options and we're going to say right our build project item name is associated with this script that we saved earlier and we want to add that into there and our test project we're going to associate with test and add that into there and debug project we're going to associate with debug add that to there and we're quite happy with that needs to start notepad plus plus to redefine the menus so i'm just going to shut notepad plus plus down and restart it again So now what we need to do is just assign those those um, those commands to to hotkeys. Now what I like to do is assign the hotkeys to Shift F10, 11, and F12. And um, so we can do that by going to Settings and Shortcut Mapper. And if we click on Plugin Commands and then scroll down to NPP Exec, we can see we have these these options that we created build project test project debug project so we just double click that and we want to assign that to shift plus and if we select f10 fantastic and test project we want to assign to shift plus f11 and debug project we want to assign to shift plus f12 wonderful okay so when I press Shift F12, F10, we should build the project so it'll run Vasm and assemble the code. When we run Shift F11, it will run the test Amiga machine in WinUAE, and we run the debug machine in WinUAE when we press Shift F12. So we're just going to close that. So I guess at, at this point we kind of need some some code to actually assemble so what we're going to do is we're just going to create a little a little wait for the mouse so if we do mouse let's start uh, lm lmb and it doesn't really matter what this actually does for now 
as long as it compiles to some code. Time B. Move quick. And we just do the exit bits, RTS. And what we're going to do is we're going to save this to a particular project name. So if you recall, we needed to save this to a particular name so that Vasm would actually pick it up. And the name was it's in a folder. And I think I called it Amiga Amiga Dev, I believe it was. Is it Amiga Dev? And we want to call it main.esm. And we're going to short find out. So let's just see what we call that. Amiga Game Dev. My apologies. So we just need to modify that. So we're going to save. Um, we're going to load that again. And we're going to actually the best way to do this is to just simply modify the folder name and call this Amiga Game Dev. And if we load that back into Notepad plus plus development Amiga Game Dev main.esm. So now we've got a little bit of assembler actually in there. We can press Shift F10, and at the bottom here we should see the output, and we can see that Vasm was executed, and 14 bytes were were written, and then we had the ex we had the the copy command copy the test dot execute the test dot exe to the A1200 DH1 hard drive and also the debug DH1 hard drive fantastic so now what we should get is is when I run these machines we should actually get and see the test.exe run which all this does is this code here is it waits for the left mouse button before it continues on so the first thing to do is run the test and we're going to give it a shot with shift F11 and hopefully we should see that and what is happening there is the code is actually run already and it's probably just waiting for the left mouse button so if I click the left mouse button and there you go it's loaded into workbench and similarly if we run the shift F12 for the debug session we should see monam pop up and there we go and from there we can debug our code in monam and trace the code and if I set the breakpoint here and then press the left mouse button and then exit out fantastic now there's one last thing to do um, which which is really quite useful when you when you're coding an assembler there's a way to <clears throat> somebody created a style for the assembled code um, and it's really quite useful so what we can do is just include this uh, I will need to download it um, oh, I've, I've actually oh, it's a shortcut so I, I just need to download this m68k file and it is this one so I just need to save that and I might as well put it in the tool chain folder that I created originally. Fantastic. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to do go to language and then define your language. And I'll just click on the import button for user defined language. And I'm going to tool chain and select that. And we've got an import successful message. And then we can come out of that. And what we'll find now, with a bit of luck, is when we go into when we go into Notepad, um, pretty sure it used to do this, it used to format the text. Oh, it is actually formatting. It's, so what it'll do is it'll it'll change these colours to the. There we go. Uh, what I needed to do was select language and then 68k ASM 
and as you can see all the colors have actually changed quite nicely to make things a lot more readable as you type in the code and that's it that's effectively how to build a tool chain and thank you for watching i hope it's been useful if you like what i've done make a comment like the video um hopefully it will get you start coding in episode number two i'm actually going to start going into how to do some coding so we're going to be starting off with right at the beginning with you know boolean logic maybe touch on some um, some assembler instructions like move and or not those types of instructions and we're going to be touching on the debugger as well which is really it's, it's best off to get that sort of stuff really early on and so that's pretty much it and the only thing left to say is is good night and thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next episode